Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, it's nice to have you with me, uh, even if it is uh, virtually with me. Um, trying to get rid of that glare of the morning sun, kind of beaming through the window there. Um, just like to say, um, yeah, thanks for taking this uh, quarantine uh, journey with me, and uh, it's been a it's been a year almost now, and. Um, we're quarantining heavy here, you know, we're all, the three of us as a family, you know, we're not traveling, there's, there's really no subwaying or nobody's really going into work, uh, my wife's working from home and uh, my son's doing school from home and, um, you know, I'm hoping um, things will start uh, normalizing soon, but, um, I'm also just kind of thankful for this last year because um, I was very, very close uh, with my family. You know, watching my son grow up um, for a year was amazing. And, um, you know, whether I go back uh, to JJ's full-time or part-time, um, it's uh, definitely a blessing uh, for me to have spent this year so close with him, you know, and with my wife, my family, and, uh, you know, spending that much time with them has been really cool, you know. So I guess uh, out of every, every tragedy, there's always some door that opens that kind of uh, gives you something good. crap inside the corner of my eyes, I don't even know, but uh, just rolled out of bed and uh, figured I'd do a video early before my you know, son starts getting uh, antsy. It's the weekend that he's going to want to play really soon, so. so I got a little time to just kind of, you know, check some emails and keep the door shut, do a few, uh, you know, things for dad, some, uh, make a video for you guys, and, um, and today we're going to talk a little bit about some some beginner stuff, some primer stuff. Um, if you're new to hats, and um, or whether you're an old hat nerd like me, um, you know, working at a hat shop for 25 years, there's always something you can learn. Um, I'm learning things from you guys all the time. Um, the other day, uh, my friend uh, who I just met through the show, uh, Farkas in uh, Canada. He, uh, he told me about carroting. Carroting. Did you know that felt gets carroted? It's, a, it's an old time kind of a, uh, a process that they used to do to the felt. It helped in the felting process. And it would turn the felt orange. You know, there's certain acids or whatever they stuck in there, mercury and stuff. So. I'd have to read you the paragraph to get, you know. But um, they had felt that had been turned orange because of this carroting process. And um, I never knew, never knew about that. And um, you know, he's been studying uh, some hat things. You know, he's kind of uh, he's a writer and um, a journalist, and uh, he's doing research for a book and everything. So he's laying these terms on me, who's supposedly you know like the hat guru and stuff. And I don't know what carroting is. You know, he's like, so do you think that this felt that's turned orange because of this and then the carroting is better than that felt? It's like. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> he sent me back this little um, paragraph about carroting. And um, it doesn't matter if you're a beginner or you're one day into this thing or 25 years, you're always learning new stuff about the hats. Um, you know, just when I think I have it all figured out, um, you know, something goes and just kind of breaks the rules. Um, but um, we're going to teach you some of the basics, the primers and stuff, and uh, maybe you'll learn something, you know, maybe you won't, but uh, either way, um, we're going to talk about, you know, how to buy a hat when you, um, you're you a, a beginner, uh, a new jack, and you don't know what to buy, and, um, you know, other rules to this. Um, it's kind of the first thing you think, you know, what kind, what kind of brim do I get? Well, what are these brim sizes? What's a small brim, a medium brim, and a big brim? What's a classic brim? Uh, what did Sinatra wear? What did Bogart wear? Um, things like that. What are some big brands, some really big brands, things you could look out for? And what are the different levels? You know, what, do, what do I buy if I only have like 
a hundred bucks or if I have two hundred bucks or what do I buy if I want to spend a little bit more maybe you have a 50% uh, off sale and I could afford some two hundred dollar hats or some three hundred dollar hats what are, what's you know below Stetson what's after Stetson what's what are some alternatives to Stetson um, and um, you know all of this stuff the background kind of like if you didn't play guitar and you needed to buy a nice guitar for your son but you knew nothing about it so you want to know the lay of the land a little bit you know what is there um, there's Gibson there's Fender they have cheaper versions there's Squire and Epiphone there's you know different price there's use there's new so you want to get the whole what am I doing with my hand <laughs> I just woke up excuse me so um, we're going to get into a little bit of that, and I'm not going to play too much guitar today. I'm going to try to keep it easy, and uh, I'm going to try to sing a song that I feel is kind of beyond me and a little bit um, challenging, because that's what I'm trying to do here, is play some songs and try to work on my singing voice um, so I could get to be a little bit more confident singer. So I'm going to sing this off the first Elton John album, uh, Take Me to the Pilot, and see if I can play this one. I'm going to try to figure out the chords as I go along, so um, leave me a little room for stumbling, all right? That's the disclaimer. If you feel that it's real, I'm on track. And I'm here in the prison, like a coin in the mirror, I am the deal. And spending in the trees And with the sound of throwing Is a one day design Take me to the pilot Low control Take me to the pilot On the soil Take me to the I want you to take me to the point. I'm on the street. Take me to the point. I want you to take me to the point. I'm on the street. No, 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 no,
right. Let's talk a little bit hats. That wasn't the worst. I actually didn't stumble on the quartz too badly, too. Um, yeah, Elton John's definitely one of my favorite singers. I, I like the way he used to sing in the old albums and stuff. It's kind of like the little bluesy, New Orleansy kind of. I kind of like that style. Um, I like them. Sounds weird to me. Okay, now when you go, I'm putting this off because this is such a long subject we have to get into now. All right, when you get into a hat shop or onto a hat website, the first thing you're probably thinking already is Fedora or Western. You most likely have that made up. Some people don't because they want something in the middle. They might want a Fedora that's kind of got Western trim that looks less 40s, like a Stradaliner. Stradaliner is a hat that has a narrow ribbon instead of this big ribbon. It has binding on the edge and it has kind of a western string tie band. So it has kind of like um, a classic teardrop fedora shape, which is kind of 40s film noir, with a western trim, almost like an open road but without the open road crown, a teardrop crown, and it's softer felt. So it's like taking the, um, the middle cusp between a dress hat and a western hat, and you're using the dress felt, the softer felt. Um, so it's a lot closer to just a plain fedora. It's basically just the way it's trimmed it gives it a western package, you know. No wide here, no wide binding. You do a thin binding, you do a thin band, and it makes it look more cowboy. Now, um, there are things in between, like um, the Stetson Dune, which is like an outback hat. It's a flat western, kind of like a big, flat brim, low crown, and it's very mellow. It's not a cowboy hat that goes up on the sides like this. It's a flat, low, with a very thin band, thin open road band, and a thin binding. So it's much wider than a Stradaliner, and it's Western hard felt. So you're taking it now one more direction towards Western. Now you've got an Outback hat, which is like, it's an American-made Stetson with a flattish brim, flat downturn brim like this, a low teardrop crown. So it looks like kind of like a flat western, or a western that doesn't curl up on the sides. You know what I'm talking about, I think. A lot of guys wear those hats. Um, it's a classic look, sort of almost like The Undertaker or um, The Wrestler. The Undertaker wore that, and also um, Crocodile Dundee, I guess. Um, there's all different degrees of between western and between, and, and fedora, like you could go a little bit more towards a fedora, which is a Stradaliner, or more towards a Western, which would be like a teardrop Western, not a cattle increase. A teardrop will look a little lower and smaller, or something like a Gambler, or a Dune, or an open road. A Dune, I just mentioned, is a flat outback, 
Um, you've also got the Australian Outbacks from Akubra, which are incredible, very, very nice felt. And um, you've got Open Rose, which are essentially another kind of a crossover hat. It's a, um, it's a cowboy crown. It's a cattleman crease, three finger, like a rancher crease, but low. And a fedora brim. So you've got the brim like this that's got a snap in it, a flange. It's basically western thick felt, small little almost like a brim, like a like a fedora, two and three eighths inch, and a flange that allows it to snap instead of a brim like, you know, like this, which would make that, you know, much more cowboy. Some people ask to have open roads done up like that. It's almost like if somebody wanted a full-size rancher and they were a little short person, it would it'd be like a way of, you know, making a miniaturized cowboy hat. We'd be like doing that to an open road. I've done that for some super short little people, you know, and it looks good on them. Um, but, yeah, it's not really a great modification. I don't like it that much. Uh, um, and you're better off putting a, a teardrop in an open road or something like that. That's a good good mod that generally looks okay. Um, what you want to think now, um, okay, fedora or, or western, you want to think brim size. With fedoras, um, the brim size is, it's vast, you know, it goes from all the way down, you know, one and three-eighths inch, one and a half inch is like a short brim, it's kind of like a real small brim, it's what the little old men used to wear, you know, the, the old man feeding pigeons in the park. The old, uh, the sunshine boys kind of retiree guy. All right, the little old guy with the mustache, uh, you know, elderly guy sitting on a park bench. He wears a one and a half inch brim with a center crease. Now that's a short brim. A two inch brim is going to be a medium brim. Um, do I got a two around here? Yeah. All right. So figure your two inch is going to be your medium. It's in between a big full classic brim. You know, and um, a short, short little old man hat. Two inches, great. Two inches, what like Sinatra used to wear. It's short. It's neat looking, and it's authentic. It doesn't look as costumey and detectivey, and uh, you know, Indiana Jones as a big full, you know, brim. So the two inch medium brim, I think, is fantastic. But um, after that, you've got like a two and a half inch. So. Let's think of it like this, short, medium, wide brim. Short brim is one and a half, medium brim is a two, a big brim is a two and a half. Short, medium, long. Two and a half is your classic brim. Um, two and three eighths is a tiny bit smaller. You see that a lot. Uh, my green hats are, are two and three eighths, as are my favorite hats. Um, this is two and a half, pretty much. Five eighths in the front. Two and five eighths, two and three eighths on the side, so it's kind of in between that. You know? um, two and a half or two and three eighths are kind of like the classic big brim hat. Um, although two and three quarters, a lot of the times looks the same. We have a hat called the Ontario, and um, you know if you had a little bit of a big face, a little bit of a pudgy face like this, it might be a good way to go because. Um, if you have a bigger face, the two and a half is going to look like a two and a quarter on you. You know what I'm saying? It's all relative to the face you put it on. For instance, when I wear my two inch brim hat with my hair down like this, I think it actually makes my face look a little bit pudgy. You know, just a little bit. But when I tie my hair back, it looks perfect to me. Um, so if you've got some double chin action happening, you know, a lot of us do. It's kind of a normal, like... Uh, you know, when you're in your 50s and 60s and stuff, it starts happening. Um, just like you need to wear those reading glasses, uh, those magnifying glasses from the drugstore. 54 years old, you wear, you know, a 1.5 magnification. Uh, 60 years old, you wear a two-point man. It's, it's normal, you know, it's part of aging. Everybody gets a little bit mm -hmm. double chin. You guys seen Chevy Chase, what he looked like uh, in his last uh, few movies, so... Getting old generally is that, yeah, you get a little bit, a little of this. And then you also get a little of this down here too. So even if you're like a super skinny guy like me, look how skinny I am. Crazy bony dude. I don't even have like those man hands, like those dad hands. I have like kind of like 
I don't know, mom hands or kid hands or something. But, um, well, my wrists are. My hands are actually big. But, um, I'm skinny. And, um, this hat has a two inch brim, even makes me look a little pudgy. So, you gotta start thinking if you wanna go for a two and a half, two and three eighths inch brim, and your face is a little bit big, okay, a little fat, go for the two and three quarter inch. It's gonna look the same on you, okay? If you're doing this two inch brim and you're, you're a little fatter, you know, a two and a quarter might look good on you. A two might look fine too, you know, I'm sure it'll look okay. Um, to be honest, two inches is great, but when you're going a little smaller than two, a little tighter, it still looks fantastic to me. I mean, it's incredible. Uh, a one and three quarter inch brim almost looks like a two, but it just looks neat and just authentic and real. It's, it's, like a, it's a good thing. Most people don't have big shaggy hair like me too. They have just, you know, normal kind of, just a head here with some hair on top. So, um, with my big hair, I think, this two inch brim might be too small. So you gotta start thinking, what brim size is gonna look good on me? There's, there's different looks. There's the short brim look, the medium brim look like Kev's got, and then there's the big brim look. And then there's even the extra big brim, which is like a three. Do I have a three here? Yes, I do. The three inch is like an oversized brim that you can't even get in most companies. Um, you have to go to like a, a custom hat company and have them made up most of the time. A lot of the times three inches just, they don't have three inch fedoras other than like religious hats and you know, like heavily, uh, you know, uh, religious Jewish areas. They have three inch, four inch, five inch, six inch brims and stuff. But um, you don't see threes. They generally stop at two and three quarters, two and a half. That's what people generally want. And anything that gets bigger than two and a half is, you know, or two and three quarters is usually like an outback hat. It's getting western or outdoorsy or cowboyish. But if you want just a plain old fedora with bigger brims, they're hard to get. These days, they're starting to pop up a little bit more. The production hats are making them not just the custom brands and stuff, um, but for the most part, we have to order something special if we want a three inch brim from somebody, like the Madrid that was ordered custom. Um, Stetson makes the Calico, which is a great little hat. It has no pinches on the side, but it's easy as doing this if you want the pinch. Um, so yeah, brands are starting to make them now, but a three inch is oversized, oversized. So if you're, let's say you're a really fat guy or you're just a big guy with some big shoulders, the three is gonna look real cool on you, you know, on your big shoulders and stuff. It's gonna even things out. It's gonna look modern. And when people see that big brim, they're like, wow, that is, that's something different. That's something special. I've never seen a fedora big like that. It actually looks fashionable. It looks kind of cool. It's different. Um, the big brim is its look, it's its gimmick, or, you know, what sets it apart from the other hats, and that's enough, you know, get get a good style, a good color, you know, it, it's enough, it's, it's flashy enough, a big brim, so keep it subtle and stuff, you don't need lots of feathers and crazy bands and binding and stuff, um, three inch brim is, is a statement, you know, it's a big statement, um, Two and a half is a lot easier for most people to carry. Two and three eighths to me looks really neat. Um, we have a hat called the Ontario that just went on half price sale, which is incredible with a two and three quarter inch brim. And um, I think it would basically give you this look, the same look as this two and, you know. But um, think about brim size, that's your first thing. Say, um, I want to try on some brim sizes if you're in a hat shop and experiment with them until you find a brim size that looks right. Then start thinking color. You know, it's all very methodical. You want to first get your size. Once you nail your size, you know what that is. You move on to brim size. You try on, can I try on something with like a two and three eighths inch brim, please? Okay, that's good. I like three eighths. Can I try that on with a teardrop crown? You've got center crease and you've got teardrop, which are the two essential shapes for fedoras, really. Those are the two. A teardrop is going to look a little more nostalgic and blocky and kind of squarish in the top, where this has more of a, a little bit more flowing kind of a graceful shape to it. It's simpler. It's just a simple crease like that. 
your teardrops got more going on, it's kind of like, you know, it dips down in the back, it's got, you know, some creases here and there. It looks very film noir. The thing about the teardrop is, if you're tall, or if you're just a big guy and your head is just big, you know, big, bigger than smaller guys, you're going to need depth. And when you wear a center crease like this, this crease juts out into the crown chamber, the head chamber where your head fits, and you bump into it. It's not a problem when your hat is soft because your head just pushes it out of the way usually, okay? But when the hat is hard, it is a problem because you just hit it like a wall, like a roof, and it stays up there instead of going down here to where you want it. You don't get the depth you need, and because of that, you're not getting the stability and a tight fit that you need. So what you need to do is buy a teardrop, because a teardrop, instead of jutting down into it, it goes up. There's a little middle bubble, and that bubble goes up and comes out of the center. So you've got a little chamber for your head to fit up. up. So not only does it not jut in, it's not even even with it. It goes up, up above the top of the crown. So it's, it's a good thing. It gives you more depth. While the teardrop is deeper, the teardrop appears lower. So that's the ironic thing. This center crease is going to look higher generally. A way of lowering it is teardropping it. And teardrops generally look sleeker, lower to the... But there's a simplicity and a grace to a center crease. If you could pull it off, you could pull the height off. It's beautiful to me. Um, there are ways to lower a center crease. It's super, super easy. It's not like a hack or anything. It's just like almost common sense. It's what I do all the time. If you want to lower the height of a hat, center crease looks too high to you. You just lower this front area right here. That's it. You don't have to lower everything. Nobody sees this stuff back here. Back here is dealing with the depth where your head is. That's my head you hear. Okay? You can't bring this up and down. All that does is gives you less or more depth. Actually bringing this higher allows the hat to sit lower. So bringing this up will make the hat lower. Bringing the front, this this area here, bringing that down will give the whole hat's appearance of looking lower. So when you want to lower a hat, you, got, you know what I'm saying is don't give up on center creases because you like low crowns. All you got to do is take this shape, this little U, and just make that U lower. You know? So it's like that. That's the simple sloppy version, but what I do is I turn the hat around, I look at that, and I bring it down neatly. I make make that little U shape pretty symmetrical. Okay, so before it was up there, you see? You bring that whole thing down to this U shape, and you sculpt that in a way that it just looks exactly like it was before. Okay, and then you get the you bring this down and get the pinches to the new height the pinches will sell it and then basically that's it you lowered your hat before it was you know like up there so lowering it is simple I have some videos showing you how to do this um, deepening the crown on a center crease is just the same thing but right over here you, you steam it steam this inside put your fingers inside and just push it up push that little bubble up See? And when, when you got it as high as you can without it popping out, okay, get it to a nice high point, hold it, hold it still and let it cool. Okay, then do it again. Hit it, push it up a little more until you got a bubble in the middle. No one will see that bubble because it's all the way up above our eye level. You know, the hat's up here. No one will see the bubble. But what they'll see is that the hat is down here where it should be. Okay, so that's adjusting your own hat height and depth. You can do it. It's not hard. Um, I definitely have in-depth videos and all that stuff. All right. You found your size. You've found your brim. I want a two and three eighths inch brim, let's just say. Um, you know if you want a teardrop or a center crease, you tried them both. Um, you probably can do either one with some adjustments. It's not a big deal. Most people can just wear either one. But if you're super tall, you might prefer a teardrop just it'll fit you more efficiently without any uh, modifications. Um, teardrop or a gambler. Um, teardrop's the best though for tall, tall, big people. And uh, you've just uh, figured out the crease you want. The color is next. Color, you want to think dark or light first. 
do I look good in a black or a navy hat? You know, that's tough. Dark hats are instantly look kind of dressy. When you do a hat in like black or navy, a fedora, it makes the person look kind of formal. It has this kind of business-like, funeral-ish, evening-ish look. Um, if the person is not, is kind of pale skin, it really washes them out and makes you look, it's kind of like an intense look. So you gotta watch the black. The navy is a little easier to do. The navy is not such a bad color to buy. It's pretty easy, actually. The only thing about navy is it doesn't match tons of stuff. It'll go with your casual stuff, you know, your jeans and your sweaters and your leather jackets and all that stuff. But when you start dressing up and really color coordinating, it goes well with your navies, your blues, your grays and your charcoals and stuff maybe. But that's about it. Not a lot more. Um, some people pull it off with black, but it's a limiting color. But if you have something to wear blue with, then that's awesome, you know. Um, black, again, is rough. Sometimes it could be super cool, it could be very formal, dressy and stuff. Like a black Saxon to me is super cool. It can look casual or like ultimately dressy, you know. There's nothing as dressy as a real simple black fedora, you know. Um, yeah, so colors you gotta watch. Gray is a good color. It, it will be just as useful for black and navy um, as a black hat. Um, gray will match typically with a black coat or a navy coat or a dark overcoat, almost anything, a trench coat, you could pretty much put it on with anything. Black with the black band with the gray uh, felt. Um, Stetson calls that color caribou, they're gray. But uh, gray hats are really useful. Tan hats, like a taupe or a tan, is probably one of the most useful hats too. It goes great with almost everything, with black, with earth tones, you know, brown, trench coats, jeans, um, dressy, not dressy. Um, look at your eyes, look at your complexion, your hair, look at the whole thing, how it looks on you. Is the hat doing something for you? Is it detracting? Is it looking natural on you or is it looking like, eh, that's all I see is that guy's weird hat. I can't even look him in the eye. You don't want the hat to wear you. You know, it has to be understated enough, you know. Um, I mean, you know, unless you're a performer or something and you really want super flashy and, you know, that's your, your bag. That's okay, too, you know. Um, it's just a different thing. Um, yeah, think color. Um, guys with blue eyes, light eyes, gray is always really awesome. It just tends to work for us. Um, these chestnut colors work good for people with dark complexions, dark hair, um, dark eyes. And um, after color, you know, you've got brim size, you've got the color. Um, you could also think about different brands and different qualities. And what are my choices? Stetson makes stuff like what they call fur felt, which is you know, generally in that $200 range. They have different qualities. They have Royal Stetson, Royal Deluxe Stetson, Sovereign, which is a little bit below. And then they have, you know, like other things, Excellence and something above that. Um, there's not a heck of a lot of difference until you get to like the Excellence series. Uh, not a lot, but what you are looking for is fur felt. It should be made out of, it should say 100% fur felt. That's warranting, you know, paying over, you know, 150 200 dollars for it, 210 to whatever. If it's made from wool, um, you shouldn't be paying much, you know, 125 or something, you know. Um, for an American-made wool hat, light felt, rollable. There is one type of wool called light felt, which is made uh, by one guy um, on the East Coast. And uh, the Bowman hat, yeah, the Bowman hat company, they dole it out to everybody, to Bailey, Stetson, Capus Headwear, New York hat, hats, everybody gets it. Um, it's a better wool felt than regular wool. They're soft. Um, our... Blues Fedora, the Blues Fedora, and the Atlantic, and the Outback hat are made from light felt. It'll generally have a light felt logo inside the crown. No lining, no leather sweatband. They're rollable hats, so you don't see that in travel hats. And they're good for rain, they're good for cheaper hats, they're good to beat up, because you could put them in your pocket when you get to um, a destination. This is a very good first hat. It's a good way to see what kind of brim you like. You could spend a hundred bucks instead of two hundred bucks, and they're rollable. So when you get to the cafe or dinner or the train, you could 
roll it into a cone, put it right in your pocket, and that's okay. Um, I mean, it's really okay to do it. There's a technique to doing it. You know, the burn goes down. This is a crusher too. Fold it in half, you know, and you roll. Um, that's okay to do to light felt hats. You put it in your pocket, um, pocket book, a coat pocket, a sleeve or something. If you want to travel, you have to put it inside some sort of little capsule. And if it's actually going in a suitcase, it needs to go in like a sneaker box or something, coffee can or something. But um, you can travel. You can even get two light felt hats in one like Adidas box. It's, it's not hard to do. His and hers. Now, light felt is a good way to start for a first hat because it's inexpensive and even when you start getting into the 200 and 300 more expensive hats, there's a place for it in your wardrobe because you know when it's raining and it's blizzarding out and horrible out, you don't want to wear your expensive brand new two $300 hat. Your light felt hat is cheaper and it's rugged and crushable and does okay in rain. Um, you just have to flip the brim up when you're done and hang it in a cool room, no heat. Even a hot room is not good for it. As long as you dry it the right way, off the brim, not on the brim, upside down or hung up would be better. Brim flipped up and no heat. It will be fine for many years. It's not gonna shrink right up because it's wool. Um, think of a good wool coat. If you've got like a Pierre Cardin, like, you know, uh, overcoat from like the 1970s and it still looks really fresh. A good wool coat will last you for a while. This is like that. It's not going to last you generations. Like a good fur felt hat you see from the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and they look brand new. Or you brush it once and then it looks brand new. It's not going to last like a fur felt hat, but they will take a beating and they're fully crushable and they're inexpensive. So a light felt, look for the logo, the genuine light felt is always American and it always has light felt logo in it. Uh, some companies that make it, Bailey, they have their, their stuff, uh, Capus Headwear, New York Hat and Cap, um, New York Hat Company, excuse me, New York Hat Company. Um, Stetson has it too, they've got their version of it. It's an America-made light felt, but I don't see the logo in it, so they have something else, like their Bozeman, their Sturgis, those are light felt crushers. Um, anybody who has those, then you know what I'm talking about. It always has a welted, uh, welted edge, which is rolled over and sewn like a hem. Um, it's a fatter looking edge, but it, it needs it. It gives it some weight and it gives a good snap. It gives the brim some strength and some weight and definition. Um, when you're using cheaper felts, a welted edge always helps. Um, a raw edge or a bound edge is not going to help the hat at all, where a welt will. Um, yeah, the other two edges, like a raw edge or a bound edge, is strictly for cosmetics. It's to look polished or to look clean. But when they roll it over and they hem it, it actually gives it a little bit of strength, um, like the Stetson Saxon. It's kind of a nostalgic and old-timey looking thing. But um, on light felts, it's uh, essential, and those are, they're great. I mean, for 100 bucks, you can take a hat, roll it up, put it in your pocket every single day for years. Um, that's a good deal. Whether it's got a raw edge or not, it doesn't, you know, impress me or not impress me. It's just a, uh, it's a good thing. And there will be times where you want to wear a really good looking hat, but you don't want to mess up your expensive stuff. So when it's raining or a nasty out, wear your old hat, your old fur felt hat, okay, or buy a good light felt. They're really good for, you know, travel hats, things to just, you know, wear every day as a real workhorse kind of thing. Um, then you got wool felt too. Generally if it's wool, it's not going to feel, it's going to feel like hard and, and itchy, where light felt feels a little softer. Um, regular wool hats, they're going to do better when they're super hard, when they're stiffened. Like our wool derby, our wool Hamburg, or um, uh, stingy wool pork pie. They are plain wool, not light felt. They stiffen them a lot with a stiffening spray, so they're almost laminated with this very hard. Um, it works for a derby and a Hamburg because they can be very starchy and stiff. You know, the style is indicative of that. Um, and it works for a very small jazzy pork pie because you, you never break the brim on a, like a one-inch pork pie. Um, 
that is good good stuff. You want a wool hat like that to be stiff. Otherwise, the rain will get in. It's gonna all the shapes will will just open up, and uh, it's the stiffener and the welted edge that's protecting that hat. So I'm gonna say like this: there are different levels of hats. If you can get a good fur felt hat on half price, it's great, you know. Um, but it doesn't mean it's going to perform better than a light felt hat or you know especially with westerns wool westerns actually do pretty good because they're super thick but you're just not going to get the longevity that's what you don't get you know you, you don't get like decades and generations out of uh, wool hats you know and you can have it for 20 years you know, but if you're wearing it really wearing it you know in the weather and rain and stuff no more than that um, but unless you're closeting it and you're taking it out for special occasions and stuff, then it could last almost indefinitely. Um, there are a lot of brands out there. Stetson uh, is probably the number one American brand. Um, they're known all over the world. Stetson is owned by a company called Hatco, which also owns like four other big brands. They own Resistol hats, Western hats. They own Charlie One Horse Western hats. They also own uh, Dobbs Fifth Avenue uh, fedoras. Dobbs is uh, an old, old name from, you know, like back in the old vintage hat days. Uh, Dobbs, Knox, Kavanaugh, Adams, Stetson. Uh, Disney hats. There were a lot of good American brand hats and making lots of money back then. Dobbs um, got bought out by Hatco and Hatco really revived that name and the Stetson name. We generally don't do a lot of Dobbs because the Stetson name does better here. We have a lot of tourists and a lot of people who just love it. Um, it's a classic. It's uh, like Levi's, Harley Davidson, you know what I'm saying? Gibson or Fender, it's the, the original. Um, John B. Stetson, I believe, pretty much invented the Western hat or was the first guy to mass produce it and bring it, you know, to, to the people. Um, I know he was like a philanthropist and he, uh, he started like Stetson University and he gave his uh, employees, you know, like uh, all this cool stuff, benefits and stuff when nobody else was doing it. And um, he was like a pretty big deal. Um, they started in Philadelphia and their, cow their uh, factory looked like a city. I mean, it just looked like just blocks and blocks and blocks of, of huge factories. Like where each one looked like it was too big to be true. There was a whole city of these factories. You won't believe how big their, their factory system was. It was incredible. Um, but um, the name does very well and um, they've continued to be the number one brand that everybody wants to know, like the gold standard. And they've revived themselves. They have very, very good designers working there now. They're coming up with some incredible designs like the Asher and the Tri-City and you know all these new things. Um, there are other brands. Akubra from Australia is a very, very reliable brand. They make uh, very rugged hats that do well in rain and snow. And they make uh, fedoras that are made from rugged, kind of almost western felt. So they're one of the few exceptions of hats like this. Dress hats that you can actually wear in rain and you'll be okay. You know, let the snow pile up on them. But, um, you know, they're Australian. It's a very old, old classic brands, you know, like uh, kids in Australia, it's like a light, rite of passage, you know, you're uh, growing up in a, a rural area, and when you become old enough, you get your Akubra, just like getting a Stetson in Texas, it's like, you know, it's a proud thing, a status symbol, and um, it goes back generations, you know, it's a, it's a real deal thing, people in Australia actually wear Akubras, you know. Um, great stuff. We don't sell a lot of them. We keep it pretty limited, but um, I would like that we expanded the brand because they're fantastic. Um, then when you want to go a little bit higher, there's what they call custom hats. We work with a company called Rocher now out of Seville, Spain, who are like master felt makers. Um, they make, you know, beaver, 
beaver with mink, with a touch of mink. They do a pure 100x natural beaver from the, only the chest, the underneath downy, like soft chest hair of the beaver, undyed, unstiffened, just the natural color of the hair. They do all these exotic felts, and they'll pretty much make a hat exactly the way we want. Any brim width, any color that they can get for us, uh, we can order any band with, we could get different textures, make it velvety if we want. We can make the brim stiffer than the crown. Um, they'll put our name inside, you know, whatever we want. The band, the, the double bow that, you know, we want it to look exactly like the bow on this hat, we give them templates we say we want this shape crown they make it exactly to our specs and then we create a custom line using a little bit better stuff um very like you know luxurious soft felt that's not like you know, crunchy and hard um, we stiffen the brims to give them good snaps and we keep the the tops a little bit softer so you can manipulate them a little if you want you know you want to tighten the pinch or you know lower the crown um, generally the problems are in brims so we keep that snappier so they don't get too uh, you know floppy but um, they're made to all our specs um, and we've been doing it for years we used to mix it up do a bound edge a raw edge a welted edge we discovered the welted edge weren't selling as much so we got rid of that one model the cordoba we changed it to the ken and we gave it a, a raw edge with a whip stitch um, which looks pretty sharp you know and uh, it started selling like crazy. So we create our line according to what sells and according to what you want. If people keep asking for burgundy, we get more burgundy hats. If they want three inch brims, we start making a three inch. If they want something in an exotic finish, like a velvety finish, we can do that. Um, or a silk finish, you know, we, we had a whole silk finish line once from McGill. It did okay, but it didn't do fantastically. One model took off. Actually, two. The three-inch brim Untouchables and the um, the Derbys and the Hamburgs did very well. But then we had like four or five <laughs> other models that did okay. And we wound up selling them half price. Um, so we have to sort of anticipate what's going to be hot, what's played out. Are three-inch brims out of style? Nah, they're getting hotter. I think they're getting you know even more requests for them now. And I don't know. If the flat brims have been running their course, they might be played out. Nah. No way they're gonna get hot. You know, you got to think of this stuff uh, a year and well six months in advance when you do your ordering, and then they make the hat for us, and nobody else can get that hat. So if you want a three-inch brim, bam, we'll make it for you. Three-inch brim with a bound edge, yes, we'll call it the Madrid. You want it in whiskey? Yeah, we'll do it. What color band do you want? Wow. Okay. Yeah, we could do a, a whiskey in a beaver mink. You know, we carry that. Yes, beaver and mink. Um, what color band do you want, black or blue? I mean, black or brown. Uh, on a whiskey hat, we're going to try navy. Mm, navy, okay, navy on whiskey. So we could get a little bit more daring and sell things that Stetson doesn't make. If, let's say you wanted a three-inch brim hat in whiskey. It doesn't exist. It does not exist we make it exist for you. Now it exists. So there's a Madrid, which is now a classic style. Um, let's say you want a, um, you, know, you, you know what I'm getting at, right? There are certain styles that just did not exist and we created them. Like the Ontario um, is a, a two and three quarter inch brim in vivid colors, you know, beautiful raw edge and you know, wind cord it's you know like a very almost looks like a european kind of a real high 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 premium hat it's um it's a good good quality and the price is really worth you know the felt is just it looks like one of those five six hundred dollar hats you know. then they came out with a beaver felt we said okay we want the same thing but we want a beaver version now so we came out with the alberta and then that sold um so it's like we can create styles according to what people are asking for. Um, sometimes we just can't get something through Stetson or a Kubra or, you know, people want to whip it in whatever, you know, they want to whip it in a tiny brim or something, you know. 
we have to start making new styles up if some things don't exist. And that's what's good about custom. You could also, um, the quality control is really good. You never see a thread out of place. Um, it costs more. It takes a little longer. Well, actually, these days, for production hats are actually slower. Um, but um, it takes longer. We have to order them very far in advance, you know, like more than a half a year in advance. And um, sometimes there's a language barrier. Things could come in a little bit wrong, you know, because we tell the salesman who's Italian or Spanish, he writes it down in Spanish, they tell it to another Spanish guy, and by the time it's translated and passed on to two, three more people, the hat comes back a little bit different, you know. That happens a lot. Um, I don't know what I'm getting at, actually. I don't even know what I'm talking about. But um, I think I'm going to play you guys out, and uh, I've rambled on enough. Hopefully, yeah, we're under an hour. Okay, that's good. Not so bad. Look for some sales. JJ is running the craziest sales I've ever seen now. Um, if you can afford to buy something now, it's the time. Um, they're doing half price on everything. Eventually, almost everything is going out at cost, which is like, it's like giving it away. It's not, not even making a profit. So. Uh, take advantage of that, guys. It's it's not going to happen forever. Um, this pandemic is, uh, you know, it's going to eventually disappear, and um, or fade away, and things will go back to normal. So if you're looking for like a really good deal, um, now's the time. And just keep, you know, put yourself on JJ's mailing list. Go to jjhatcenter.com. They have an e-list, um, and they don't sell, send you any junk. They don't sell it to anybody. We're pretty low-tech, you know. And you only get one email whenever we have a sale, and that's it. Nothing else. Um, no junk mail, no crap. So uh, sign up for that and look for the sales, and then just jump on it. If you want something in Beaver, you want it in Ontario, you, know, you want this, in Seville, Madrid, Go for it. They're running out. All of these amazing felts will be gone soon, and we're going to have like an empty shop, and uh, the straws will be coming in soon. So, if you um, are thinking about pulling the trigger, yeah, put the hammer down soon, because I don't think these sales can really keep going on at this uh, capacity. They're just like, they're too crazy. They're crazy. We're giving it away. Ooh, I'm at a tune. All right, so let's talk about some stuff while I tune. Um, really hooked on these new Reverend guitars, this uh, Jetstream 390. Really hooked on it. Um, I was never able to really play a Strat for my whole life, and I always loved the Strat tones, but. It, I can't play one. There's something about the pickups on a Strat that whenever I get to the playing the, the heavy rock chords and stuff, I just can't get a <clears throat> you know like a heavy sustaining rock chord out of it. That the bridge pickup was always really thin and tinny, like a like a surf guitar. It always sounds twangy and surfy to me. And um, I've always considered the Strat to be the hardest uh, electric guitar to play. You know. Like, only guys like Jimi Hendrix can earn that, you know? But if you grow up with it, it's just it's just another guitar, you know? And I never grew up with it. This thing is like a Strat killer. It, it's the only Strat-type guitar that gives me those tones and more. You know, it's got a bass contour here. It allows you to pump it up and get, get it more bassy and revoice these pickups. It also has a, a P90 at the bridge, which is like a Les Paul Jr. It's like a really raw kind of sound. Punky, um, and they distort really nice. Um, it sounds a little bit like Green Day. I think the guy from Green Day uses uh, P90s, except this is a, a Fender scale, which gives it a little bit more twang and bite, you know, than a Gibson scale. It's, uh, it's a little bit longer, and uh, it's a bolt-on, bolt-on neck, like a Strat, so, you know, it's almost like a Les Paul Jr. mixed with a Strat or something. Yeah, they 
distort beautifully these pickups.